Hey guys, Spencer Kaufman here, teaming up with How To Video Channel. Today we are going to show you how to lay out your book in Adobe InDesign. Now this is great for authors and web designers or graphic designers alike. Typically graphics designers are going to get this in school, so we're going to gear this towards authors. It's going to be a whole series of videos coming up on how you can get your book from nothing in InDesign to a finished product that you can send out to the publishers. So this is what you're going to do. The first thing is when you open it up, uh, you're going to get this pop-up here. Just close it. If you don't have the pop-up, then chances are you have disabled it sometime in the past, and you can disregard closing that. So what you want to do is go up here to the File menu. And you'll go to New. Now you are going to select New Document. Believe it or not, that is what you want. You do not want to hit Book. Book, if you choose that, uh, later down the road, it's just going to mess you up. You're going to have all kinds of problems. So choose File, New, Document. Click that. Then you're going to get this little pop-up window that comes up with the new document setup. Uh, you can leave the document preset on default unless you have uh, created some kind of custom document that you want to use for your future books. But chances are, since you're watching this video, you haven't done that yet. So leave it on default. The intent of this document will be for print because you're going to be sending this out for print publication. Chances are you're going to be doing it for CreateSpace or some other print-on-demand company. Now, if you have uh, different intentions and you want to put it on web or digital publishing to get different sizes, you can do that. However, with web and digital publishing, many of those places accept uh, Word documents, PDFs, EPUBs, and all of those other formats. So typically, why burden yourself with creating InDesign for that format when you can simply send them a Word document or a PDF? So the next thing you will do is this number of pages. Uh, this can be changed anytime later on. So go ahead and just choose a manageable number, uh, like 30 would be great. And then you can add to or delete from pages later on very easily. You will want to leave this on facing pages because that is going to have... Uh, two pages side by side so it will look like a book instead of a vertical line of pages like just a Microsoft Word document. Uh, starting page number is number one. I'll leave that be unless you decide you want to have uh, like an appendix with Roman numerals or something or uh, an introduction with Roman numerals. Then you could start your first page on number 10 or however many you decide to have there. So for now just leave it on one and that's that. The page size is something that you will choose. Um, you can select anything really. It has a big drop down menu. Um, so you, all of these unfortunately are pretty useless to authors. A uh, letter, you're probably not going to publish an 8 by 5 by 11 book, but if you are, great, use it. Or uh, select any of these, see if any of them fits your trim size. If not, you can go down here and create a custom page size which is super easy, very easy to do. Um, like most authors are going to be published uh, either 8 by 5, you could maybe do a 5 by 7, uh, sometimes 9 by 6, that's like the most popular. So whatever your size, uh, if it's not in here, go ahead and create custom. A little pop-up will come up, you can give it a name, and then you can change your height and width. So if we decide to name this one uh, 9 by 6, then we can do the width of 6 inches and a height of 9 inches. And then all we do is hit OK. And there it is. Now, anytime in the future, if you need this, it will show up right here on the top. These are all of the custom sizes that you have created. And you can just click that and select that anytime in the future. Columns, leave that be unless you have some kind of trivia book or something where you want two columns. Uh, Bibles are typically published with two columns. So if you're publishing something where you like the lines columned on the, on the pages, then you can mess with that. Otherwise, leave it. Gutter is fine to leave unless you have received specific instructions from any publisher or layout specialist that says to use a different gutter. The margins are something that you will probably want to leave alone unless you have, um, again, specific instructions or depending on your book size, you may wish to make the inside margin a little bit bigger. 
like 0 0.75, you'll notice that when we click on one of them, they all tend to change. That is because there's this little button here. It's a link button, and that makes them all the same. So what you're going to want to do is click on that. Now you just broke the link, and you can change them individually. So we'll have the inside one be 0 0.75. That way, people don't have to really flatten out and open your book to see that inside text. There'll be a little extra space there, so they will be able to hold their thumb in there where the spine is, and they can read your book. Okay, once you're done with this, you'll hit OK and some time will pass and everything will be generated just as it should be. You can see all of the pages here side by side laid out properly. Now let's say you d you made a mistake and you need to change something. Uh, you will want to make sure you have all of your book sizing, trim size, and everything done before you add any content to your page. Because if you add some content, you get your book laid out, and you decide, oh, instead of a 9x6, I'd like to do an 8x5, well, then you're pretty much in big trouble because you have to manually go through one by one and change each page. Uh, you could change all the pages at once, but you have to change all of your content by clicking and dragging it down to your proper page size, which will take forever. It will be a major pain. You do not want to do that. If you have already done that and it happens, it's a mistake, you're only going to make once, uh, you will learn from it. But take it from me, you do not want to go there. So if you have made a mistake, before you add any content, you can go over here to the File menu and go down to Document Setup. When you click that, you'll see all of these options that you had before with the addition of Bleed and Slug. Now, Bleed and Slug is something that uh, you don't really need to use slug. You don't really need to pay attention to it at all. The bleed, if you do a lot of uh, pictures in your book, then you will want to mess with the bleed. Uh, basically, what bleed lines do is it makes your uh, the area outside your trim size a little bit bigger so that you can take your picture and put it outside the text. That way, when they trim your book, your picture will be on the edge of your book instead of floating somewhere in the middle. Now that being said, you don't want to put any important uh, graph data or statistical data or anything outside that bleed line or within a quarter of an inch from the edge of your page for that matter because it will get trimmed off. There's a very good chance they will trim it off. So if you have pictures, like when you're doing your cover for instance, use a bleed line, otherwise you can leave it all at zero. And again, if you needed to change anything, change it before you put any text on your page. Uh, once you're done with the document setup, simply hit OK. And this is it. You now are ready to continue on with the next steps of building your book in InDesign. You have it all laid out right now. And in the future, check back because we've got a whole series of videos coming up on everything that you can do in InDesign for your book. We'll tackle putting content on the pages and multiple generic big things that you can handle. And then later on, we'll hone down into several specific certain buttons, hints and tips, and multiple things that you will do as an author to self-publish your book in InDesign.